we talked earlier in the show. There were two introductory press conferences today. Uh, the biggest blockbuster trade in the NBA this season. And it included uh, James Harden going from Philly. I'm sorry, Brooklyn to Philadelphia. So he had his press conference today in Philly. And Ben Simmons did the same thing as he went in reverse from Philly to Brooklyn. He had his press conference as well. Here's what Ben Simmons had to say. To me, it was just making sure mentally I was right to get out there and play again. So that's something I've been, you know, dealing with. And it wasn't about the fans or coaches or comments made by anybody. It was just a personal thing for me. That was earlier than that series or, or even that season that I was dealing with, you know, and that organization knew that. So it, it was something that, you know, I, I continue to deal with. And, you know, I'm getting there and getting to the right place to, you know, get back on the floor. All right, Rob. Um, I think Ben Simmons is lying. Wow. Now, I'm not I'm not wow. criticizing him. I'm not being, you know, I'm not trying to disparage his character. But what I'm saying is there's a time, you know, when you just you don't need to tell everybody your business. Like a GM. You know, GM doesn't go out there in the to the media and say, Yeah, we're looking to trade Russell Westbrook. Yeah, we're looking to trade Tobias Harris, you know, you 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 gotta play the game and and say right. what needs there's to be said. There's a game that you yeah, have to play, a, right? Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's life, right? It's not just in case you, know, you can't your, pull your the wife trade off, comes Chris. To you, Rob. Right, right. Does it, how you like this dress? How you like my hair? Oh, it's nice. You might not like it, but you better say it's nice. See, that you was my I mean? problem because I said you look fat. <laughs> and uh, and now I'm divorced. It was over, you know, I mean, right? I'm just right. It's just right, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. So I I think Ben is saying what he needed to say. And Rob and like I said, I think he's lying, and I think that's a good thing for the Nets because if he ain't lying, then what did he just say? It was just what was the problem in Philly, Ben? Ah, uh, it was just something mentally, you know, that I was going through personal. It wasn't about the fans. It wasn't about the coaches. It wasn't about any comments that Joel or that Doc Rivers made. It was going on before this, you know, the, the Atlanta Hawks series when I stopped shooting the ball. They knew about If that's true, then what's changed? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm getting the guy that's got issues. I'm getting the guy that, okay, it wasn't just the Sixers. It wasn't just Doc. It wasn't just Embiid. It wasn't the fans that, that booed you at times. You just got some things you working out. And if you didn't, weren't able to work them out in Philly and none of the issues around people around you were the problem, then why am I to believe you're going to work them out in Brooklyn? The point is, Rob, I don't believe it was what he said. I do believe it was Philly. I do believe it was the people in some of the people on the team, some of the people in the organization, some of the fans, it was Philly. And, and part of why I believe it as well, Rob, is that if you saw, I don't know if you saw the press conference today, like watched it, like not just hear it, but No, 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 it. I just heard it. I, right. did, I did not watch it. I was teaching today, so I right, did okay. not watch it. Ben Simmons, who has not, Rob, correct me, Rob G, correct me if I'm wrong, he hasn't addressed the media this year while he was in Philadelphia, right? Not once, not a peep, not a word. He looked great. I don't, I'm not talking about how he looked. I'm talking about how he sounded. I'm talking about his demeanor. Can I'm I talking say about this, his Chris? command of the press conference. Let, let me say this real quick and then get back to your thoughts. I think that's disgraceful that the Philadelphia media didn't demand to have a like a, a presser. Like I can't believe they allowed that to happen. Seriously, like that that's wrong on the Sixers' part. Chris, he's on the he's on the roster to not have one presser to see what this guy is going through or to have a conversation. I think is unfair. I, I really do. It is. It is. A, it is it's, unfair. It's, it's unfair. It's unfair it, it, to him. We still got to do our job. Right. But it's unfair to him, too, because we have to now cover him, Chris, with an assumption of who, what he is. Right. You and can't what, get mad at, at right. false narratives out there because you're not saying anything. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. But today, Rob, Ben Simmons was confident, or at least he looked like it, and came off as confident, as calm, 
as comfortable. He seemed fine. And that is good for Brooklyn. Now, I don't know. I don't think it's going to pay dividends this year. But I do think going forward, if he's good, you know, mentally, it could pay dividends. So I, I just think he wasn't like all this junk. It wasn't Doc. It wasn't Joel Embiid's comment. What was it then? If you're just going through personal issues, then, I mean, everybody got personal issues. Everybody's been, you know, got some anxieties, some fears, some, you know, challenges. You know, and so I I think that was a good sign for Brooklyn, Rob, that that Ben Simmons was lying. Well, (laughs) no, I I hear you on that, but I'm going to say, and I know this is uh, the obvious thing but for me Chris nothing he says matters can I can I say that nothing he says matters to me I if I'm Brooklyn or if I'm a Nets fan or I'm teammates I want this guy to play to his potential that that it's only about that I don't the other stuff and I'm not going to judge him I have sympathy for him Chris if he's going through something you know what I mean but if, once you right? once you step if, if I said if because you, you once know, you're on the you know court, saying there. yeah, once you're like, on the court, it, it, I want you to give your all. That's all I want from you. That that right. that's all I want. I hear you. Is you give your all and give us a chance to win. You're a talented basketball player. You couldn't get to this point if you didn't have some talent. And 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 you're too young. You're too big. You're a playmaker. You you, you defend. You could defend, Chris. This guy can Great help abilities. the Nets, right? Absolutely. Can help the Nets. So, so that's what I want from you. I'm not going to get into the other stuff. And, and I think moving forward, it's going to be about does he perform for the Nets on the court. And if I'm a player, that's all. I'm not going to get into anything. And if he does, Chris, he has a chance to wipe out this bad chapter of his life. Totally. Am I right? Totally. If, he, totally. If, he, if, if the Nets somehow win the championship, oh, oh, my God, what that would be for him especially. You always do. LeBron wiped out Dallas. Now, of yep. course, it, it happened. You bring it up when you're talking about him and Jordan, you know, little things like that. But he wiped it out for the most part. Uh, uh, Harden's got a chance. You know, go win it if this they year. Win. And we yeah, won't be they... talking about how you left Brooklyn and right. you quit and all that. So you're absolutely right. And here's why I said if, Rob. Because, and I, I want to say this, because I think our society – And our sports leagues, this is an important issue. There are legitimate mental health issues. My daughter, I paid all this money. She went to the University of Pennsylvania to get her degree in psychology. Big time money. She works at Yale in doing research in psychology department, all that. So I'm I'm, I'm, I'm with that. She's in a great town. New Haven, Connecticut is a great town, Chris. Yeah, yeah. That's why I went to college. Um, (laughs) But... There's legitimate mental health issues. But there are also issues, challenges, anxieties, fears, dislikes, offenses that we all must deal with. It's called life. Everything isn't supposed to be peachy keen. It's great if it is. But just because you're uncomfortable doesn't mean somebody's doing you wrong or doesn't mean we got to do a restart. You know, I, Rob, I, I, you know, we joke about it. How I moved around a lot as a kid, right? right. I was born in Baton Rouge. I lived in Cincinnati, Ohio, Indianapolis, Indiana, Syracuse, New York, Des Moines, Iowa, Cleveland, Ohio. There is nothing, Rob, like the first day of school. Oh, I can imagine. When you don't know a soul and you walking in as the new kid and in some cases you walking in as the black kid. And Especially in you Iowa. know what? I couldn't say, I don't feel like going to school today. I don't feel like I felt uncomfortable because everybody else was white or I felt uncomfortable because I didn't know anybody. It's life. You have to deal with hardships. Rob, have we ever had hardships here at Fox Sports Radio? Yep. Ever had hardships in our career? God knows I have. You got to wake up and do (laughs) your job. 
And so that's all I'm saying. Like, we have to find that medium between, okay, what's a real, like, really somebody needs some help? And you just got to push through this. And I'm, it might not be easy to figure it out. And for some people, it's different than others. I get all that. I, I, but we I, just I, can't let every little thing that offends somebody, you know, mean we got to redo society. Nope. And, and as you know, and I've said it before on this show, I went through a major crisis in my career and was able to stay steady and know who I was and steady the ship and continue yep. on. And a lot of people, Chris, might have crumbled, might have said, uh, you know, like, I, I, I'm done. Like, I, you know, I'm, uh, uh, they didn't renew my and contract. And blamed it on that. And blame it on, right? exactly, as the They're reason. They're doing me wrong. And exactly. maybe they were doing you wrong. But it but didn't still, stop me. And right. That's my point is that you have to have that inner strength to believe in yourself and work through things. I worked through it, Chris. I worked through it. And here I am on the other side. Right. And Rob, and, and we are in a public job, just as right. these athletes are. We don't get the scrutiny that no, many no, of no, them but, get. But, but still, but, but, Chris, anytime you're in a public job, when, you when, got, when my contract some wasn't might not renewed, be built for it. When my contract wasn't renewed, Chris, that was a story. It was right. it was a big story. Right. No, I got to walk around and answer questions. Right. And, and deal with it, and people going, ah, see, you're out, blah, blah, blah. Right. You're done. You'll never be in the business anymore. I heard everything, Chris, everything. Yep. No, nah, it's true, Rob. And 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 if you can't handle stuff like that, then maybe you're not built for a public job. Yep. Whatever it might be, politician, uh, broadcaster, athlete, entertainer, just don't expect to be in a job like that or some other public job. And then, oh, they can't say anything about you. They can't criticize you. You know, I can't afford to be offended. It's life. You have to deal with it. We talked about that last week, right? Politicians. <laughs> Every day, Biden, Trump, D Obama, they get hammered. Whatever, they get getting destroyed. Hammered. Getting Full hammered networks dedicated to yep. killing them. Yep. Every day. Every day. And, and if you're so, going to crumble every time somebody said they don't like you. Thank you. Or they disagree with you or your policies or whatever. Dude, you'll never get anything accomplished. Absolutely. Because nobody, nobody, nobody is going to get full of, I don't care who you, Chris, you could be the Pope and people are against right. you. Right. <laughs> I always say it sometimes if, if somebody's mad at me, Jesus never sinned. Yeah. And yet people didn't, some people didn't like him. Some people had issues with him. And so it's life. We're not saying we can't fight for things to be better and good. Obviously, we should do that. But you have to work but through the But offenses come, yeah. yes. And so we doing y'all young people a favor by telling you this. Don't expect everything to be handed to you. It's not, it's That's not, a, not it's realistic. Not a, and it's not a smooth ride. There are bumps along right. the way. And the strong survive. Chris, you know what it's like? When those wildebeest or whatever have to go across the river every year, you know, when they have the, and they have to go across through the crocodile waters. Yep. Yeah. Right. Every year, that's the only way they could get across, Chris. Yep. There's no other way for them to get across. And guess what? The strongest survive and they make it across. Right. And some of the weaker ones are not going to make it. You can't. Right. You, you're right. That's just the nature of it. Like, like, there's no other way. They can't get a, the the wildebeest can't build a bridge, Chris. <laughs> like, right? Oh, let's build a bridge across. No, there's no you bridge. Got, that's the way you got to go. Yes. All right. You can cry about it, feel sorry for yourself, and guess what? You won't get to the other side. That's right. Or you could just put barbecue sauce on your leg and get in the water. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I couple fox. I knew Wars Alex radio. would like that about eating animals. Bro. Everything's not funny. Alex, animals eating animals is bad. Too? You talking about them like it's nothing, Rob is. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. 